Hello everyone, this is Rogue, uh, well known as Rogue Rolls 20 on Tumblr. And today, after uh, talking with a few people that recently got Clip Studio, I'm going to be showing what Clip Studio can do. It's also known as Manga Studio. Uh, this is the standard edition is what I have. Uh, it is very similar to several programs. Uh, Paint Tool Sci is one of the big ones, uh, but also uh, Alpaca, uh, Fire Alpaca is another one. Um, Alpaca Fire or Fire Alpaca, I get the two confused <laughs> of how it sounds, just combination Alpaca and Fire, either way. Uh, both of them are a paint style uh, programs, very similar, well, Clip Studio. Manga Studio is the same program, but they're along the same lines, which is a bit different from Photoshop. Photoshop's got a lot of tools and a lot of capabilities. It's more than just illustration, as people have seen. You can do crazy stuff with Photoshop. But Clip Studio is primarily an illustration program. So today I'm going to be slightly working on a commission uh, for a friend, one that's been going to backlog for a while. <laughs> But I do want to use it to help show. So a couple of things to first know is when you first get the program, it's going to be in a more white format. You can actually change to a dark setting, which personally I prefer. It's less strenuous on the eyes, which uh, does help out a lot when you're hard at work. But uh, there is quite a lot available with this. I, I want to say Clip Studio has more options than what Paint Tool Sci has. But uh, both are wonderful programs. I've just had better use out of Clip Studio than I have with previous. And uh, yeah, my background is normally blue. I usually put blue because it's less strain on the eyes. Uh, and it's also a calming color. Uh, you can also keep in mind that with any art, it is entirely how you feel the process. This is what works for me. It may not work for everyone else. But there's definitely lots of options, because when it comes down to it, it just matters if you're happy. So we have as lots and lots and lots of availability here. So my favorite section are is the brushes. This was the big thing for me. There is so many different types. Uh, I primarily use watercolor, and to give you an idea of why, uh, this is how the opaque goes. Well, you can do a different color. As you can see here, just in the watercolor side, even the opaque, this is a blending. So I have several colors here and they actually all merge together quite beautifully. So that's the opaque one, which is really good for like if you want to do a quick paint. Uh, this is what I primarily use. Uh, there's also transparent, which you can tell opaques like this. But the transparent definitely is a little bit better. I mean, this is giving a good amount of pressure, just lightening my hand. And you can tell it really is a difference. Um, opaque is kind of similar. I mean, that's hard. It's going lighter, but it's more vibrant with opaque. Transparent is a very common one I use. <laughs> And just like with opaque, it does blend in with the other. And it even does it lighter where you can kind of stretch it in the other deal. So this is my primary tool for a full paint is this particular brush. But you can tell it's just that, that's a nice blending right there. Um, dense I use for a lot of highlights. Uh, you, when you first start it, it's a very, very light uh, brush. I mean, look at that. 
it's very thin. Uh, kind of does pay attention to pressure, but it's sharper than what opaque does. It's still very vibrant. And it does blend, but not as much in comparison. So this one you can layer pretty decently on. It'll still, as you can tell, it kind of does a nice little overlay on it, but the more you do on it, the more the color goes. Um, I do use this primarily as a highlight, especially if I got to do a shiny metal. This will be my primary tool. Then you got others. I mean, they're smooth. Uh, to be honest, I don't really use this tool much. Uh, it is very similar to transparent. It's kind of like how the opaque. It, it, I don't know, the best way to describe it to me is kind of more of the transparent version of opaque. As you can tell, it's just kind of like that. And it goes lighter. It's definitely very soft, more blur uh, in comparison. does blend, and this is why I love the watercolor section. And then there's paint and apply. Uh, to be honest, I really don't use this one much at all. Yeah, it's kind of an interesting brush, but it's, yeah. As you can tell, it's kind of more, it kind of blends, it does more of an overlay. It's really soft, but it does go into the other a bit. Uh, then there's a raw color brush, a really decent if you love textured stuff. Because, as you can tell, it's kind of got that little deal. It makes it more feel like it's a real brush. And it does blend. So this is really good if you do like that textured kind of feel. Uh, same with Running Color Edge. This is another one that's really wonderful if you love texture, because look at that. I would have to say this is primarily my sky one, just because it's got that nice little feathery, but still kind of textured in. And it does kind of blend. And really, yeah, it, it does a bit there. Now it's just mixing the two. Uh, watery is another one I like, but I haven't had much chance to use it. Uh, it's usually a much thicker kind of brush. There's more to it. I mean, even at a 7, it's a little bit thicker than others. Uh, extremely vibrant, but you can do such a light touch with it. Just like any others, it, it really the watercolor ones blend so nicely. And see, it's something that I would like to use more. But this is, if you want some very vibrant stuff, this is going to be your one. Uh, there is emphasis with texture. Again, it's one if you love textured stuff, really useful one. Uh, I don't think blue is a good option on that end, but. But as you can see, it's kind of got that papered. Where if you kind of want it to seem like it's an actual piece of paper that you're working on, then this would be the brush you would want to use. And as you can tell, as I blend them, they don't even become green with a yellow and blue. It just kind of goes together. So, that's the samples of the watercolor brushes. But as you can tell, this is, this is my primary reason why I got the program. 
was the fact of the blending, and I definitely use the watercolor side. Uh, but you do have oil. Is another side. Which actually does kind of blend a bit, but this is more... As you can tell, it doesn't fade. This is just... Touch really just changes the size. So the more pressure, the thicker it is, and lighter touch, it thins out. But, just like the water tool, it does blend. Kind of very similar to how oil paints really are. It's not where you can push it, it'll just be very light on it. Oil on a flat brush is kind of more of a drier, well, a dry version. So again, kind of a little bit of a textured feel about truly being a texture. It kind of blends. And I do use this brush primarily if I have to go over line work. Uh, and then there's color change. Color change is kind of an interesting one. Um, I don't really use it, but as you can tell, you can change the tips. So like, part of the ends will be different. I mean, it's... I would think this would be good for if you're trying to do a feather or almost something iridescent. So those are... And this is so far just out of the paint side of Clips 2. There's actually a whole bunch of more brushes, but this is just the paint. Um, here is India ink, since there's that was it for the oils. So this is technically an inking tool. Uh, it's actually very textured, like if it would be an actual brush. But, as you can tell, Unlike the oil and the watercolor, it doesn't blend. It'll just go right over. Uh, and that's a smooth. Uh, this is a husky. Well, bit husky as they call it. Make it a little bigger here. Yeah, and see? That's how it looks if you just press it. Can't be slightly transparent. It does kind of go over decently. Uh, then you got rough. So slightly a bit more textured, uh, lighter ink. So if you weren't using that much of ink, as you can tell, it's a little bit more transparent. So, I'm going to go in hard to less pressure. Yeah, and see, it doesn't blend. Uh, and there's even dark bleed, so... Woo! Okay, I'll admit, that kind of, that color kind of hurts a bit. <laughs> Those are the, the painting side of it. Uh, there's also a spray. I kind of use
this brave. But again, it's one of those ones I don't really use often. I'll use it very occasionally. And it doesn't blend. Just kind of how a spray can is. That's a uh, hard. The soft is the one I tend to use the most if I do use this, because this gel is really nice and light. More pressure, more vibrant, and just the lightest touch, but it doesn't, doesn't feather out. Like, the more faster the stroke you do, the lighter it is. Now, these ones are a bit interesting, so this next two. So this is highlight and shadow. As you can tell, I'm trying to paint with it, but it's not going. It's actually only usable on an image itself. So if you do kind of like that little highlight deal, then yeah, this would be the one. Uh, and of course, there's even shadow, which well, actually, yeah, Shadow's kind of going around a little bit more. The highlights the one that will stick. Um, there's also Spray. As you can tell, it kind of gives you a nice little roughness to it. Uh, tone. It almost feels like the MSN paint, if you remember back in the day. This, this is kind of like that. color spray. So these are really good if you want to put some textured, maybe a little grungy or something. Um, this is Droplet. So if you need to let's see, do a blood scene or water droplet on th this would be a good brush. So that's out of the spray. got other so of course there is a pen so G pen is really nice and thin that's at a much thicker deal uh, I use the G pen a lot for line art just because it's got that nice sharpness to it it also thins out uh, mapping pen is kind of almost the same. I mean, this is okay. So I did that at a twenty. This is at same. It's a little thinner. Kind of thins out. Uh, turn up pen. I want to say if you want to do a lot of neon or kind of. Just freeform writing, that's pretty decent. Uh, there's also a calligraphy pen. Which I've never been able to do it for digital. And if you hear the little tinkling in the background there, that's Sugar Bear. Say hello to Sugar Bear. He's the one who's usually around. Uh, this is for effect line. Uh, this one will change, so. I almost want to say it's really good for another part of calligraphy. textured. So, nice little bubbly. And that's it for the pens. And now there's another side, and this is an interesting thing. Uh, as you saw with some of the paints, they have two tabs. 
So that was the pen, and now there's marker. So we do have a marker option, really good for filling out. However, I've noticed one kind of thing. Uh, again, doesn't blend. And depending on the type, like, let's try this with a, that's also the other deal. It, it's not a one deal, it'll actually be a little transparent and kind of burn in. And this is at the felt. I'm kind of similar how a marker really is. It gets darker the more you strike onto it. Otherwise, that single line is just a solid color. Uh, fill in mono is actually just that. This is really good for a fill in color. As you can tell, I'm going on multiple times, doesn't go over. Even when I switch to a different color. pen. Kind of another decent one. And this one's just kind of got a more sharp tip to it in comparison. And then dot pen. This is... And this is the interesting one, because you really can't change the sizing of it. And that kind of the feeling of MS Paint. So those are the markers. And here's the... of course there's the typical fill-in. But the ones that are kind of unique is this one here, because this is more for effects. So if you want to do comics, or add some backgrounds, or some effect deals, then this is pretty decent. And there is quite a bit. So I'm going to up it a little bit more. Let's go darker so you can see it. Or we'll go light. But got some stars. Another stars. We got some hearts. They really don't change color. Uh, I'm wondering these are kind of almost stamps. You can see there's other stars. Whee! Sparkle, sparkle, sparkle. If you want to make things sparkle, there's the sparkle and glitter. Another kind. Not as feathery. like a little firefly look. And another soft, the circles. Uh, these things really great for background, some effects. It's kind of really what they are. Little pentacon. And there's feathers. Uh, let's move these so you can see it better. See, look at that. Feathers. And musical notes. Which, their size really is dependent. They're kind of more of a stamp. Uh, even blood stains. So. In this case, it looks like paint, just because, well, it's white. Here we got hatch. So that's friction, gauze, 
these are kind of things you would see in manga a lot. That was gauze cloud, the sand, That's soft A, soft B, uh, diagonal lines. So it's kind of like for music. Cross hatching. See, it's kind of reminiscent of printed newsprint. Cross hatching for script. See? Uh, then we got clothing. Now, these are definitely more like stamps. And to be honest, I don't think I would use these much at all. There we got Tridoline, Simple Frill, and these, and Lace Ribbon. I mean, like, these are really good for if you want to do something kind of quick or something minor. Pretty much an accent. Braided rope. More lace. And sometimes their color, like Japanese ribbon, is really dependent on what colors you're placing in. Pearls, and you see it's kind of more realistic. And it says something that you wouldn't really see me use much of because it's just. Too much like clip art. And, oh, yeah, sometimes Clip Studio has a, <laughs> or my computer has a hissy fit with these specific ones. It's really weird. Uh, here we got some patterns, so hearts and stars. And there's snail. Butterfly, ivy. Melody. Flower pattern. So again, something that you would probably see more of a background. And there's Sakura. And another flower deal, but more like clip. Which I'm surprised that one isn't in a flower, it's more of a pattern. Oh, actually, never mind. I was in the right one. No, no, it was in the flower. And I apologize, my, as I said, my thing has a hissy fit. Anytime it goes on this. Cherry, so more cherry blossoms. And cherry petals. For all your weeaboo needs. And poppies. Which this one is dependent on what colors you have. Hydrates. So yeah, like so that's on the outline, but if I just change, oop, a little too much there. Yeah, I see it's whatever one you have kind of selected. Cosmos, water lilies, which actually look more like daffodils. Plum. So another good for effect, but and a full illustration probably will not use. Lily, rose, morning glory, and sunflower. So if you want to go more of the, the manga look, obviously, these would be really good. Like Nico, Musky Maple Leaf, which this is kind of also on CS in a way, on Photoshop. Foliage, trees, 
tree, 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 tree. And that looks really dark. So. Also, careful when you hit control Z. Fallen leaves. Grass. It's grass, hey? Grass B. And grass C. No, C. There we go. So, mix them together. It could be a little bit nice. So, like if, as I said, if you want a manga effect, really good. And more grass, grasslands, just kind of whoop, place and simple. Then we have artificial. Uh, to be honest, I really don't like these ones. I mean, look at this. I am so emo. I have barbed wire. There's rubble. Uh, to be honest, it's just kind of weird. I would probably end up using this one more than anything. It's crack. And the little five year old me is going, hee <laughs> hee. Caution, keep out, keep out, keep out, keep out, keep out. One of the fences. Yeah, which doesn't look that good. And there's even iron fences. Still not a good one. Telephone poles. Or if you're into trying to do manga and I really don't like the bubbles because look at it. It's clip art worthy. So this is our official. If we have natural, which so if you want to draw a man cat a lot, here you go. Or a lot of rainbow. A flame. Oh, good for a little is that a manga effect. Some flyer. Sand clouds. Horizontal stripe clouds. Mass rocks. So these are, oh, yeah, small stones. So the, as I said, these are really good if you want to do specifically more manga. Which you won't see me do a lot of. I may end up using these later on, but for most of my stuff you won't. But there's a nice wavy line, wavy line, rough edge, bumpy. So these are really good, like, say, if you want to make something nice or textured, or, like, with this one, like a map, you can say, oh, start here, start da 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 bop. Or even with dot, 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 no, that's dash, still. And we still got dot, 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 there. So, these things might end up using. And this is the decoration subtool. Now, to kind of give you another idea of something, and another tool that I end up using a bit. Now, this wasn't available in some programs. And that is the blend tool. Of course, you know, Photoshop's got its own version. give you an idea a bit more, so putting several colors together. So this is blend. 
And a lot of us are used to the smudge tool to try to get the same effect, but... Fungus Studio is a little bit smoother with the blending. This is one of the first tools that I was really trying out, because I never really had much access to something like this. And of course, you know, everyone goes bananas with the blending tools. Uh, now with a lot of my paint stuff, I use it infrequently. I mean, I still use it, but it's primarily to fix things if it looks a little too choppy. color stretches pretty well. So that's just blending. And then there's blur, which, you know, does exactly as you would think it would. Uh, fingertip is essentially the smudge tool. So. Just like that. Uh, then you have watercolor on fiber. It's more of a texture blend. Smooth watercolor. Still blends. Kind of gives it more of a water effect. And then copy stamp, which is like how it is in Photoshop. I personally don't use it. So those are that. So those are samples of the tools available, at least uh, some of the tools, primarily the paint, the ink, a lot of the colorations that you would end up using in this program. So that's for part one. I'm going to stop this video because otherwise it's going to go too long <laughs> and work on another part so you guys can see a little bit further of what this, this program Clip Studio is capable of doing. And to be honest, a lot of stuff I learned from trial and error, and I recommend you doing the same. Try them out, see how you like them, see what works best for you. Because it's always what you're most comfortable with, what you feel like will be perfect for your style. And it's not about copying anyone else's, it's how, you're, how you want your art to look like. So th this program can do a lot of good, but you know, definitely be patient. And uh, keep up the good work. And always keep drawing. Please, always keep drawing. <laughs> but thank you. And have a wonderful day. Love you all.